All right, we're back on the record on State versus Lloyd. He's present with his attorneys. The State Attorney's Office is present. Mr. Ridgway, Mr. Buxman, have you had a chance to try and figure this out? Yes, ma'am. This is one of those things that uh, with a little advance notice, we could have edited it down and had it ready to go. We don't have that software he we're here. Okay. So we're going to call Deputy Avant and not use his video body camera. Okay. We may, depending on how fast we can get the technology going, we may come bring him back and attempt right. to reintroduce it. Um, On a similar vein, Your Honor, I'm moving to introduce Exhibit A, which is the entire video cam. We're that, going to yeah. we're going to publish only a portion of it. Again, we don't have the technology here, but we can uh, probably tomorrow or certainly by Monday provide the court a CD with the portion that is played and have that as an exhibit so it's part of the record. I'd have to substitute. Here's, here's the only issue that I would then have to, and I'm fine with doing it that way because this was no notice, even though this, these items were clearly on the, your case management, the order submitted for case management. Um, I would then have to substitute the exhibit because any exhibit in evidence the jury's entitled to see and they would not be entitled to see this one. So I'm fine with the procedure that you're proposing, which is you put it in now and we substitute on Monday or whenever you can get it to me, the edited redacted one for Deputy Ward. Okay. Um, so before, so you have any further objections as to the body cam for Deputy, who was then Deputy Ward, I realize you have a different name now. Deputy Ward, any, any further objections? No, ma'am. All right. All right, so this is admitted over the objections of the defense as state's exhibit number one to be substituted with the redacted copy um, when that's done. And before we go, and while, while the clerk's marking that, a couple of things for the folks in the audience. I went over this when the trial began, but it's been a bit, so I'm sure everybody's forgotten it. There are no cell phones allowed in here. You cannot bring them out. You cannot use them. If you are, if the deputy see you using them or I see you using them, you get one warning. The second time, you're out the door, um, and then we'll discuss whether you can come back in. Credentialed members of the media who use their cell phones for their jobs may, may use them. But other than that, if you're in this courtroom, put your cell phone away. Turn it off. Put it away. Your smart watches can't be used either, all right? Follow the directions of the deputies, please. If they ask you to step outside, do that. Um, I want everyone to be able to view this trial, but you must behave in a professional manner. No making faces, exclamations, or outbursts during witnesses being on the stand. If you have any questions, direct them to the deputies. All right? Okay, let's bring the jury back in because they've been on quite a break. You guys ready to, do, to stop the video when you need to? All right, let's bring them back in. Stay recognized presence of the jury. Yes, Defense. Defense recognized presence of the jury. Yes, Judge. All right. All right. Um, Mr. Ridgway, you may proceed. Your Honor, with the court's permission, I move the court permit me to publish the exhibit, State's Exhibit 1, as uh, directed by the court. Uh, permission granted. Ladies and gentlemen, while you were out of, while, while you were in the jury room, I admitted an exhibit over objections. All right, go ahead. those television screens in front of you is where you will see it. If your television screen is not working, raise your hand, tell me now. Anybody who doesn't have a picture on their screen right now? No? We good? All right. Go ahead, Mr. Ridgway. Or Mr. Buxman. Where are the people that got shot? Right. 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 Is he breathing? He's breathing. She is, but she is. She's not breathing? Yeah, yeah, they're here. They're here, sir. They're coming. Hey, 
they 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 keep driving a, a red regal, a all red, a all red regal. Okay. Yeah, you just over here in this old school regal. Okay. Do you guys know that who oh, they were? He was regal. No. He bald head. He, he just got his hair. He got gold. He buff. They're gone. They drove off. The shooter's gone. Where's the ambulance? Hang on. We've got them on the way. Okay. Does she have a pulse? I don't feel a pulse. <laughs> hold, hold on, let me feel for it. Let me feel. No. Yes. Can you say what your qualifications for the team for identification? And ask if you recognize that person depicted there? I do. And did you recognize that to be? The female victim, Sade Dixon. Yes. And who do you recognize that to be? The same victim, female. Thanks. Cross? No questions, Judge. All right, may this witness be excused, State? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you, ma'am. You are free to go. Thank you. Call your next witness. Wesley Avant. Sir, you may inquire. Hey, you are. State your name, your first name. Detective Wesley Avant. I'm sorry. W E S L E Y A V A N T. And are you employed, sir? I am. How are you employed? I'm a detective with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been employed with the Orange County Sheriff's Office? Just over five years. Um, drawing your attention to the date of December the 13th of 2016 at about nine o'clock in the evening, were you on duty at that time? I was. And how were you assigned at that time? At that time, I was assigned to the Uniform Patrol Division. Did you have an occasion to go to a house located at 6031 Long Peak Drive? I did. Could you describe the scene as you approached it? As I approached the scene, there were several other deputies already on scene. There were two wounded individuals in the front yard, um, a few family members standing around the front of the house. And two victims that you saw, you remember where they were when you arrived or as you were arriving? As I was arriving, the male victim was on the sidewalk porch area um, immediately in front of the house. Okay. Uh, the, the female victim was, I, I don't recall exactly where she was when I arrived. And what was your focus when you arrived? Uh, I went to, towards the male victim as he was being attended to by other deputies and was being relocated so that we could better assess him. And did you observe any injuries to his body? I did. He had several gunshot wounds. Can you describe where you saw them? One was uh, in the approximate center of the chest. Another was on his left leg. Did you 
see on his person a firearm? No. Did you later locate a firearm? Yes, I did. And where was that? Where did you locate it? It was in the front yard. Um, approximately how far from the front porch? 10, 15 feet. And as the eventually uh, EMS arrived to provide care for the victim? That is correct. And after they did that, um, did you, well, let me go back to the firearm. When you located the firearm, what did you do? I stood over the firearm to guard its position to make sure that it wasn't moved. Okay. And did you eventually turn that duty over to someone else? I did. And after you had done that, where were you, what was your next uh, part that you were going to play in the investigation? Once I was replaced uh, covering the firearm, I made my way to my patrol vehicle. On the way there, I assisted uh, another deputy in locating some shell casings in the roadway. And uh, do you recall how many shell casings you located in the roadway? I do not recall the exact number. And did you assist in marking them in any way? I did. I provided some business cards so we will fold them in half and place them over the shell casings. I have no other questions, Your Honor. Cross? Yes, sir. Is the witness, is this witness uh, free to go, or is he still under subpoena? Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, subject to being recalled. You're subject to being recalled, but you're free to go now. Yes, ma'am. Right. Thank you. Call your next witness. Who you called, Andrew Harrison. The, uh, the court deputies inform me he is present but will be in the courtroom momentarily. Thank you very much. May Thank you, Your Honor. Can you please introduce yourself to the jury? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Andrew Harrison. Where do you work? I work for the United States Secret Service. And before you worked for the Secret Service, where did you work? I worked for the Orange County Sheriff's Office as a crime scene investigator. And how long did you work for Orange County Sheriff's Office? Uh, I was there for two years and eight or nine months or so. Was that whole time as a crime scene investigator? Yes, sir. Can you describe for the jury your training that allows you to be a crime scene investigator? Sure. Uh, prior to becoming a crime scene investigator, I had to do a four-month FTO program uh, with senior crime scene investigators at the sheriff's office. Uh, it entails processing uh, evidence, processing crime scenes, how to take photos, pretty much everything it entails to be a crime scene investigator. And before that, I was a, an intern with the Osceola County Sheriff's Office for about six months. So obviously during that training, were you trained in how to collect different pieces of evidence? Yes, sir, I was. And are there different methods used depending on what piece of evidence is being collected? Yes, sir. What does it mean to process a scene? Uh, to process a scene means to basically arrive to the scene, gather information from various detectives and deputies that arrive to the scene, uh, start to take photos before and after with, uh, with markers to detail where items of evidence are located, uh, and then it would be to collect the evidence that's located on scene using different methods uh, and then processing that scene for uh, either DNA or uh, fingerprints, uh, any sort of evidence we can gather at the crime scene, and then take it back to the crime scene lab at the sheriff's office and process the items that was collected for uh, the evidence that I mentioned before. You mentioned you take photographs before and after. Do you take photographs of the scene as it is when you first arrive? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What type of precautions do you take when you're processing a scene? Uh, 
when, when I'm processing a scene, I take precaution not to one step on anything or, uh, or knock anything over or move anything prior to photographing. Uh, I also utilize uh, a large amount of gloves uh, and also a face mask when I'm collecting any items that could be collected for DNA. Uh, we use clean, sterile bags and envelopes for each new piece of evidence, so there's nothing uh, that can be cross-contaminated between items. Let me direct your attention to December 13th of 2016. Were you requested to respond to 6031 Long Peak Drive in Orlando? Yes, sir, I was. Is that located in Orange County, Florida? Yes, sir. And how do you get notified to go to a scene? Uh, we get a phone call from our control center, and they reach out to the forensics office. Uh, at the time, I was the only person working for the, the nighttime uh, investigations. Uh, so I was the one who answered the phone and received the call. Do you remember about when you arrived? Uh, I'd have to check my report for uh, some more specific time getting in my lap to you. Well, let me ask it this way. When you arrived, had EMS already removed the individuals that were injured in this case? Uh, yes, they removed one of them. Okay. Who was still present? Uh, there are multiple deputies still present. Uh, there was the detective was still present. I don't recall if there were any additional fire or EMS there when I arrived, because I usually arrive quite a, quite a bit after. Um, but there was quite a few deputies still on scene and detectives as well. Was a deceased woman still present? Yes, sir. Was the scene taped off with crime scene tape? Yes, sir. And explain what that is and why that's done. Uh, the crime scene tape is to create a barrier for the crime scene uh, and to uh, only allow authorized entry for different police units. Uh, it is there as a deterrent, and then the crime scene was also uh, marked off by the deputy sheriffs who were standing post to make sure there was no unauthorized entry for the crime scene. During the course of you processing this crime scene, did you take photographs? Yes, sir, I did. Identification having previously shown to the defense. Can we take a look at those? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I recognize these. What are those? Uh, these are the photos I took on the uh, the night of the incident. Do they fairly and accurately depict the scene as you saw it, as well as the various pieces of evidence that you saw and collected? Yes, sir. They do. This time, state would request admission of state C as states two. Any objection? No objection. All right. This will be admitted without objection as State's Exhibit 2, consisting of 42 photographs. Is it normal for diagrams to also be created of the scene? Yes, sir. Okay. Was that done in this case? It was. Yes, sir. Starting up in Marcus State's Exhibit D and E for identification. Can you tell me if you recognize those diagrams? Uh, yes, sir. What do these diagrams show? Those, uh, those show the, the crime scene with the items of evidence, the victim, and then the, the residence. Do they fairly and accurately depict the scene, the general location, the items of evidence that you saw? Yes, sir. Objection. All right, this will be this will be received without objection as states exhibit number three. And states E as states four. Any objection? Mr. Lenneman, any objection to four? To E, the second exhibit. All right. This will be received without objection as states exhibit number four. Using the photographs 
that we just introduced and the diagrams. I'm going to ask you to walk the jury through the crime scene as well as the pieces of evidence that you located. Okay? Yes, sir. Request a permission to publish Granted. using the PowerPoint. Thank you. Again, at any time, if your screen goes off, raise your hand and let me know. Showing you photograph one of states two. What are we looking at here? That is the front of the house, uh, including the front yard and the street and also the driveway. And when you arrived, were you briefed on kind of what had happened before you arrived? Yes, I was briefed by Detective Savelli. Did you come to learn that bodies had been moved from their original location? I did, yes, I, I was aware of that. Were there any vehicles in the driveway? Yes, there were two vehicles in the driveway. There was a, uh, a black Kia SUV and then a, a gray Mazda sedan parked in the driveway. At some, <clears throat> excuse me, at some point after your arrival, did investigators from the medical examiner's office also arrive? Yes. yes and what they happened did. when they arrived? Uh, when they arrived, they take photos very similar to how a crime scene investigator would take photos. However, they're there, they're in, there to investigate the the victim, uh, and they're the ones who manipulate the body of the victim uh, and collect the items that are on the victim's body and take those back to the medical examiner's office. And were you present when the medical examiner's office examined the body of Ms. Dixon? At the scene, yes. Describe what you noticed on Ms. Dixon. Uh, she was laying on her back. Uh, she had her arms resting on top of her stomach area, chest area. Uh, she was wearing a pair of like floral pants, a pair of black boots. Uh, like a gray in color t-shirt, dark t-shirt. Um, she had multiple, uh, what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the torso uh, and her arms. Was she eventually taken away from the scene? Yes, the medical examiner's office collected her. They placed her in a body bag, sealed her, and then took her to the uh, office. Showing you photograph two from States 2. What are we looking at in this photograph? That is uh, markers one and two that were located in the street in front of the house. Um, that is markers one and two were uh, a little further away from the house than everything else. And also showing you State Exhibit 3, the diagram in conjunction with the photographs. The photograph, the markers we see in the diagram, are those also represented by the numbers one and two in this roadway area on the diagram? Yes, sir. So the marker numbers correspond to the numbers in the diagram? Yes, sir. Okay. What was found at markers one and two? Those were uh, fired cartridge casings. Showing you photograph three of states two. What does this show? That is a uh, more close-up photo of one of the fired cartridge casings. And did you collect this casing into evidence? I did. How'd you do that? Uh, I would collect it using a mask and uh, gloves, and I'd pick it up and place it into an envelope. Uh, and then I would place that envelope into another bag to be taken back to the forensics office to be processed. What caliber was this casing? Uh, that was a 40 caliber. Do you remember what kind of brand? Uh, I'd have to reference my report for this piece. Refresh your memory, please go ahead yeah. with the court's permission. Yes. Uh, marker one was a Win 40 S and W. And is that just a brand of ammunition? Yes, sir. Was this casing along with the other casings we're going to talk about, were they sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement later on for scientific analysis? Yes, sir, they were. Did you have any involvement in that scientific analysis process at all? No, sir. Showing you photograph four of States 2. What do we see here? That is also a 40 caliber uh, fired cartridge casing in the street. That's a close-up photo. Did you collect this casing? I did. Did you collect all the casings that we're going to go through? So I'm going to have to ask you that question over and over again. I did. Okay. What caliber casing was this? That was a 40 caliber as well. And, and it was a brand? it was a Win brand. Showing you photograph four or excuse two again of states two. How generally how far away were these casings from the front of the house? If I had to estimate, I'd probably guess 50 to 60 feet. Showing you photograph five of states two. What do we see here? 
That is a, uh, a mid-range photo of the front of the house. Uh, it includes multiple markers and multiple pieces of evidence, and then also the, uh, the female victim under the yellow sheet uh, in the top left corner. Yes, sir, they do. Referring to markers three and four, what were found there? Uh, markers three and four, those were additional fired uh, 40 caliber cartridge casings. Showing you photograph six of states two, what does this show? That shows a fired uh, cartridge casing. It's a little hard to see. It kind of blends in with the, with the grass on the ground. Is it just below the marker in the photograph? It is. What caliber of casing was this? That was a 40 caliber. What brand? That was a Perfecta brand. Showing you photograph seven from States 2 at marker four. What does this show? That shows a uh, fired cartridge casing in 40 caliber, and it was also a Perfecta brand. Referring you back to photograph five of States 2, did you locate anything south of Miss Dixon's body, clothing-wise? Uh, uh, clothing-wise, yes. There was a pair of... Uh, gray Adidas shorts. They had a red stripe. It's at a marker five in the photo. It's right in the center of the photo. Showing you photograph eight. What does this show? That is a more close-up photo of the shorts uh, as they were found on scene. They were uh, they had a large cut mark in them from the rescue operations that were done on scene. Showing you photograph nine. What does this show? That shows a more clear photo of the front yard and uh, of the front door and the little front porch area of the residence. And I'm referring to marker six. What was found at marker six? Showing you photograph number 10. That was a nine millimeter uh, Smith & Wesson handgun. Did you also collect this item? I did. And showing you photograph 11, what does this show? That shows the items that were located uh, within the firearm and everything at, at that marker. Uh, there was the magazine, which was loaded with 14 rounds, and then there was one live round that fell out of the grip when I, when I took the gun apart, okay. or when I took the magazine out of the gun. So when you find a firearm, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Uh, well, when I find a firearm, we photograph it in place with a marker, um, and then we'll make it safe because we don't want to transport any firearms that are loaded. So that includes taking the magazine out and pulling the slide back to clear the chamber, if there are any rounds in the chamber, just so we have uh, safe transportation of the firearm. Yes, sir, I recognize this. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? Sure. Okay. I don't. Yes, sir, I recognize it. What is it? I, I recognize the firearm. What is it? Uh, it is a uh, Smith & Wesson 9mm uh, firearm. The lock was added after. There's a trigger lock on it. There's a trigger lock on it now, yes, sir. Does that fairly and accurately, or I'm sorry, is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you saw it on scene uh, on, in yeah. December of 2016, as we see in photograph 11? Uh, yes, sir. It's a little different as it was, it's now been processed uh, with, with black powder and um, cyanoractylate. And has that also been sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for additional analysis? Yes, sir, it was. Objection. No objection. All right, this will be received without objection. It states exhibit number five. We see in the photograph that these various items are contained in the box. Did you package these items separately? I did. And why would you do that? Uh, I package them separately just to uh, keep better control of them and to, uh, for labeling purposes, uh, it's easier to have them in separate packages uh, when submitting them. Madam President? Yes, sir. Showing you State's Exhibit G for identification. Can you take a look at that item? Yes, sir. I do. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, this uh, says it's the silver magazine from this, this firearm. Sealed. It is sealed. Yes, sir. This is the magazine that was collected with the firearm. Is it the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it? Yes, sir. Time you're on, the state would move states G into evidence as I believe six. No, no objection. objection. All right, this will be received without objection in states as number six. You said there were rounds inside that magazine when you collected it? Yes, sir. How many again? There were 14. And what's the capacity of that magazine? Uh, I believe it's 14 as well. Did you collect those rounds, remove those rounds from the magazine? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. What is it? Uh, these are the rounds that were located on scene, on, in, inside the magazine. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These appear to be the rounds that were uh, located inside the magazine. Are they in the same or substantially the same condition when you collect them out of the magazine? Yes, sir. State would move. No objection. All right, this will be received without objection as state's exhibit number seven. When you first collected this firearm, you started talking about the condition of the magazine. Can you explain to the jury what you, what you saw regarding the magazine and how it was fit into the firearm itself? When I located the firearm, uh, the magazine did not appear to be correctly inserted into the firearm as it had not seated all the way into the firearm. Um, when a firearm is located, in order to pull the magazine out of, out of the firearm, you have to depress the magazine release and that releases the magazine, you can pull it out of the, out of the firearm. However, with this particular firearm, uh, the magazine was kind of hanging out of the bottom of the grip, and I did not need to depress the magazine uh, release to slide the magazine out, it did it on its own. And then when I did that into the box, a, uh, the round that is located in the bottom right corner of the box uh, tumbled out of the grip and, and into the box, um, and then I, for, as I stated earlier, for uh, safe transport, I pulled the magazine back to clear the firearm of any live rounds, and there's nothing inside the chamber. For those jurors who may not be familiar with firearms, I'm mm -hmm. assuming you are familiar generally with semi automatic firearms. Yes, sir. You load the rounds into the magazine? Yes, sir. And then you put the magazine into the bottom of the firearm? Yes, sir. You mentioned there was when you removed the magazine, the live round fell out of the front. You want to give me the photograph here, right? Yes, sir. Showing you state's eye, do you recognize that? Yes, sir, I do. What is it? This is the live round located in the uh, bottom right-hand corner of the box. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize it?
located in another smaller envelope. Yes, sir. This is the round that was located right there. Is it the same or substantially the same condition as one you just like to Yes, sir. Time to state would move I into evidence of state's eight. No objection. This will be received without objection. States exhibit number eight. You said that round basically fell out of the firearm when you removed the magazine? Yes, sir, it did. Did you also check to make sure whether there was a round loaded into the chamber of the firearm? I did, yes, sir. And how do you do that? Uh, by pulling the slide back to uh, gain access to the chamber and when the slide is pulled back, a round typically pops out and ejects out of the firearm. However, there was no round that ejected or that was located inside the chamber. Right. Showing you photograph nine again from states two. Can you point where markers or describe where markers seven and eight are located? Uh, markers 7 and 8 are located directly in front of the bright red front door. Uh, they're right on the front porch area. They're up pretty small in this photograph. Showing you photograph 12 of States 2. What does this show? Uh, this is a more mid-range photo of that front porch area, and this shows markers 7, 8, and 9, and then two areas of... Uh, large blood stains in the in the on the front porch showing you photograph 13 of states 2 what does this show at marker 7 that is a close up photo of marker 7 uh, it shows a f uh, fired 40 caliber cartridge casing what brand was that one that is a uh, perfecta brand and you collected this casing as well i did showing you photograph 14 of states 2 what do we see at marker 8 that is a uh, 40 caliber fired cartridge casing of the Win brand. And was that the same brand of the two casings that were found in the roadway? Yes, sir. Showing you photograph 15 of States 2. What do we see here? Uh, that is a mid range photo of markers 9 and 10 and the uh, large blood stain located just to the right of marker 9. And that's on the front porch in front of the front door. The front door is the top left of the photo? Yes, sir. Photo 16 of States 2. What do we see at marker 9? That is a uh, 40 caliber fired cartridge casing of the Win brand. And photograph 17 of States 2. What do we see here? Um, that is a close up photo of marker 10 and a, uh, a strike mark in the pavement there on the front porch. Uh, it's hard to tell in this photo, but there is a projectile fragment located right within that strike mark. And did you collect that projectile? I did, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Showing you states J for identification. Do you recognize that item? I do. What is it? Uh, it is the projectile fragment. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? It is the projectile fragment that I located at marker 10. Is it the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it that evening? Yes, sir. This time, state would move J into evidence as states 9. No objection. This will be received without objection as states exhibit number 9. Unlike the casing, are you able to look at a projectile or a fragment and say what caliber it is? Do you no, sir. Do you a crime scene investigator? No, sir. 
Was that item also sent to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for further analysis? It was. Showing you photograph 18 of states two. What do we see at markers 10, or excuse me, 11 and 12? Uh, at markers 11 and 12, those are located just south of the front door and south of the uh, front porch. Uh, one was a, marker 11 is a fired uh, cartridge casing, 40 caliber, and then uh, marker 12 is a projectile fragment as well. I'm also showing you close up diagrams of the area, stage four. Again, either marker number four is one of the numbers on this side. Yes, sir. indicated at marker 11 was a 40 caliber casing? Yes, sir. And marker 12 was a fragment? Yes, sir. Showing you some marks of state exhibit A for identification. Do you recognize that item? Yes, sir. What is it? It is the uh, projectile fragment. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? Yes, sir. So this is the fragment. Is it the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it that evening? Yes, sir. This time the state would move K into evidence as states 10. No objection. This will be received without objection as states exhibit number 10. And like I asked you earlier, can you tell the caliber of the projectile that we just looked at? I cannot. Okay. Showing you photograph 19 from States 2. What do we see here at marker 13? Uh, at marker 13, that is a uh, Win 40 SNW fired cartridge casing. And photograph number 20, is it just a close up of 13? It is, yes, sir. Did you collect this casing as well? I did. Showing you photograph 21. We've already talked about markers seven and eight. What was found at marker 14? Uh, marker 14 was just north of seven and eight. Uh, marker 14 was a, another projectile fragment. And what do we see in states, photo 22 of states two? That is a, uh, a close up of marker 14 and the projectile fragment. It's the sort of copper brass colored item located on the uh, more left side of the marker. Yes, sir, I do. What is it? This is the uh, projectile fragment from marker 14. Is it the same or substantial? Well, can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appears to be in the uh, same condition. Is it in the same or substantially the same condition as when you collected it this e that evening? Yes, sir. This time, the state would move L into evidence as 11. No objection. This will be received without objection as states exhibit number 11. Showing you photograph. 23 of states 2, referring to markers 15 and 16. Where is this in relation to the front door? That is just to the south of the front door. So when you're looking at the front door, it would be to the right. Yes, sir. Showing you 
photograph 24 of States 2. What do we see here? That is a close-up of marker 15, which was a uh, Win 40 SNW fired uh, cartridge casing. Is it buried under that green leaf there, or not under it, but next to it? It's right next to it, yes, sir, in between the rocks. It was a 40 caliber, you said? Yes, sir. I'm showing you photograph 25 of States 2. What do we see here? That is a, another fired uh, 40 caliber uh, SNW, um, 40 SNW win fired cartridge casing. Is it located just below that brown rock? Yes, sir. How many 40 caliber cartridge casings were found at the scene? Uh, I believe there were 11 uh, fired cartridge casings found. Yes, sir, I do. What is it? Uh, these are the uh, 11 40 caliber fired cartridge casings. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? Yes, sir. There are the uh, fired cartridge casings. They're all individually wrapped in additional envelopes. So all 11, one individual envelope? Yeah. Yes, sir. All 11. Would you like me to open them? Sure. Okay. Yes, sir. They all appear to be the same uh, as I collected them on scene. Yes, sir. They were. No objection. This will be received without objection as State's Exhibit Number Twelve. I did not locate any 9 millimeter fired cartridge casings. During your examination of the scene, did you locate any marks on the walls of the house or the columns or the door? Yes, sir. I, no I notated uh, multiple marks. Did you also photograph those marks? I did. 
shown you photo 26 of states two. What do we see here? That is the southern column. Uh, when looking at the front door, it's the column on the right. Uh, and there is a strike mark denoted, denoted by the uh, little white uh, sticker that's placed uh, on the column. And did you document the various different strike marks with letters and numbers somehow? Yes, sir. What'd you do? Uh, we, I take photographs of them with uh, small graphs that list the case number, the date, and uh, has my initials on them, and then also labels them uh, according to which strike mark they are. Um, and there was multiple located on the uh, facade of the house, uh, along the front door, the south portion of the wall, and then the column as well. Showing you photograph 27 of States 2. What do we see in this photo? Uh, this photo shows more of the strike marks uh, that were located on the, the front facade of the house. There's one located at the red door jam area that's got a graph on it, and then there's multiple other uh, ones along the, the side of the house right there. How many different strike marks did you locate? Uh, located eight. Showing you photograph 28 of States 2. What do we see here? You mentioned the one by the door. Yeah, that's uh, strike mark one, um, denoted by SM1 in the top left-hand corner of the, of the graph there. Uh, and then it shows the the uh, strike mark right there, and then it shows a little piece of uh, fragment on the right-hand side. And it has your case number on that marker as well as the date? And my initials, yes, sir. A-H. Mm -hmm. okay. Did you see any kind of dust or dirt in the hole or on the woods, in the, on the wood of the door, indicating it had been like that for a while? No, sir. Uh, the damage appeared to be uh, pretty fresh. And you mentioned you recovered something out of this Hold. Yes, sir, I did. I collected a uh, projectile. Showing you a marker of state 10 of the Nancy. Do you recognize that? I don't. Yes, sir, I do. What is it? Uh, this is the projectile from uh, Strike Mark 1. Can you open it up, look inside, tell me if you recognize the contents? Sure. Yes, sir, this is the projectile. Is it the same, Nancy, the same condition when you collected it out of the door? Yes, sir, it is. Mm -hmm. I stated the M, the N, the Nancy in deference to states 13, I believe. Any objections? Are you objecting to N coming no, in as 13? No. All right, this will be received without objection as states exhibit number 13. you photograph 27 again from states two where are strike marks two three and four uh strike mark two and three are on the facade of the residence they're seen in this photograph they're on the uh, yellow portion of the wall uh strike mark four is on the concrete porch underneath underneath this photo showing you photograph 29 of states two what do we see here uh, those are strike marks two on top and strike mark three in the lower half of the photo. So the jury is not misled. Did you, your numbers that you assigned to each mm -hmm. strike mark, are they, do they signify the chronology of which came first? They do not signify the chronology that they came first when they were fired. They're just uh, the number that I found them in and uh, how I label them. They're for my uh, use they're not and they're just for labeling purposes it's not any sort of uh, how they were fired or doesn't denote any of that showing you photograph 30 of states 2 what do we see here that is uh, strike mark 2 that's a close-up photo it's got the case number the date and then my initials as well on the uh, on the ruler sticker photograph 31 of states 2 that is similar to strike mark 2 but that is strike mark 3 it's got the same information you mentioned you located a strike mark on the, the concrete slab as well? Yes, sir, I did. Showing you photograph 32 of States 2. What do we see here? Those are, uh, that's a somewhat mid-range photo of marker 10. Those are strike marks 4 and strike marks uh, 5. Those are on the 
southern end of the uh, of the patio uh, denoted denoted by marker 10. And was that also the marker that you found a fragment of a projectile there as well? Uh, yes, sir. Showing you photograph 33. What do we see here? That is uh, strike mark four. Photograph 34. And strike, strike mark five. Showing you photograph 26 of the States 2 again. You mentioned the mark on the column that we see in the middle of the photograph? Yes, sir. Showing you photograph 35 of States 2. What do we see here? That is a uh, close up photo of strike mark six. Um, that is in the, the column in front of the residence. Uh, features the case number, the date, and my initials as well. And did that hole actually extend into the column? Yes, sir, it did. Do you know whether those columns are made of concrete or some kind of stucco type? Yeah, it appeared to me maybe a uh, drywall concrete type thing. Showing you photograph 36 of States 2. What do we see here? Uh, that is the facade of the residence just south of uh, the front porch and the front door, which can be seen on the left-hand side of the photograph. It shows the area of strike marks that we looked at earlier. However, this pans over a little bit further. The three on the left, or the ones on the left that you were speaking of earlier? Yes. Okay. And is there one closer to the window size? Yes, the yes right? sir. There is one a little bit closer to the window. And what do we see here on states, uh, photograph 32 of states 2? Uh, that is one of the strike marks that was located closer to the window. I don't recall which one it was off the top of my head without a more clear photo. Okay. How about photograph 38 of States 2? Uh, that is strike mark 7. That's the one that's closer to the, to the window. What do we see in photograph 39 of States 2? Uh, this shows a, another uh, graph sticker on the bottom half of the door. It shows uh, strike mark 8 in the front door of the uh, residence. Okay. And photograph 40 of States 2, what do we see here? And that is a close-up photo of strike mark 8 uh, in the front door. Were you involved in any kind of trajectory analysis uh, done regarding the strike mark located in the column that we just talked about? Uh, I assisted my supervisor, who was the one who uh, did a majority of the trajectory analysis and the measurements for it. Uh, I assisted him with photos and helping him set the set the rod. What generally, what is a trajectory analysis and how, how is it done? Uh, so a trajectory analysis is uh, util utilizing a rod or a string, uh, sometimes a laser as well, and it denotes the path the bullet took into a certain surface. And it shows the angle and uh, shows the angle horizontally and vertically uh, of the bullet path. Showing you photograph. 41 of states two. What do we see here? That is one of our uh, forensic rods that we used to slide through the bullet hole into the column. Uh, it shows the path coming uh, relatively on a on a uh, relatively horizontal plane uh, and coming from the north. So from in this photo, from the left to the right. And finally, photograph 42 of states two. That is a an overhead shot. Uh, of the same rod and it shows the angle from the column. It shows the angle that it's coming out of the column at, uh, which towards the bottom right corner is towards the north. And is that also depicted on both sides of states three and four with the little red marker pointing towards 13? Yes, sir. It's a little red line that follows the similar path. Are you also trained in how to lift fingerprints? Yes, sir. Can you describe to the jury your training that allows you to do that? Yes. Uh, during the four-month FTO program, uh, there is a five-week beginner section, uh, beginning section of the training that is how to process different items of evidence. Uh, a part of that section is how to process firearms, how to process casings, uh, how to process clothing, any sort of numbers, and how to lift fingerprints using the various methods that there, that there are to lift fingerprints from items. attempted to lift fingerprints on a variety of items during your career? Yes, sir, I have. Have you successfully lifted fingerprints from a variety of items? Yes, sir, I have. Using different techniques? Yes, sir. The nine millimeter in the yard that we talked about at marker six, did you attempt to lift fingerprints from the nine millimeter, the magazine, and the rounds? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. For 
the record, those would be dates five, six, seven, and eight. Did you do that there on scene or did you do it at someplace else? Uh, I did it at the forensics lab. It's a more controlled environment and uh, it has better access to all of the, uh, the powder that I used. And explain to the jury what you did in your attempt to lift fingerprints from these items. Uh, first thing we do is we uh, would cyanoacrylate after taking touch DNA swabs. We'd uh, use uh, cyanoacrylate fuming, which is a super glue fuming. And then uh, I processed the firearm magazines in the rounds with uh, black powder, which is the most standard uh, procedure. And how do you go about processing something with black powder? Uh, you use a feather, um, feather brush and dip it inside, and then you twirl over it. It uh, takes a little bit of practice to get decent at it. Using those methods, were you able to lift any fingerprints from the, any of those items that we just talked about? No, sir, I was not. Regarding the 11 40 caliber casings, states 12 in evidence, did you also attempt to lift fingerprints from those casings? Yes, sir, I attempted uh, us utilizing the same process with the firearm. And what were your results on the casings? I didn't get any there either. Are there other techniques that could have been used to process these items? Yes, sir. No, sir. Why not? Uh, typically, if I don't see any indication to uh, continue utilizing another technique, I, I don't need to go on. Uh, there was no ridge detail or uh, smudges that indicated the, that there could be a fingerprint there with the black powder, which is the most widely used forensic uh, tool. And uh, I didn't see any reason to continue because I didn't have any other indicators of, of the fingerprint. So when you were processing it using black powder, you, you got no results of anything, right? No, sir. Thank you, sir. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you. Cross. How are you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you? Good. So one of the things that you have to um, be concerned with on a regular basis with processing crime scene is that you have what's called human intervention. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. And what that means is that uh, many times before you even arrive, there are people on the scene moving around before you have a chance to document where the locations of things are. Yes, sir. Or photograph or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes, sir. And, and this case was no different. I mean, this is a case there was a shooting, there was uh, intervention, medical intervention, police intervention, civilians, all within the area of these places that you processed for casings and evidence. Is that right? Yes, sir. I wasn't there at the time, but yes, sir. And so you can't say with certainty whether something like a casing was kicked around or not. Correct. Or moved or something like that or dragged. You don't know that. Correct. 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 All right. Um, you had mentioned that the, um, the nine millimeter, um, when you went to make it safe, a nine, a live nine millimeter round tumbled out of the grip. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Where is that? Can you explain that, where that, how that happened so I can understand? Yes, sir. Uh, when I slid the magazine out from the firearm, uh, the round tumbled from the grip, which is the main portion that touches against the palm of the firearm. It fell directly into the box. And then where would that have been before? Uh, inside the grip. Okay. You don't know how it got out of the magazine? I have no clue. Okay. You don't know whether there was an attempt to load the firearm and that's how it got out of the magazine? Correct. I don't know how it got into that state. Okay. One of the things that you also did was that you collected blood specimens, is that right? Correct. Because as we had seen in the photographs, there were portions of the sidewalk area and otherwise where there were larger, um, I guess, portions of blood that had collected in an area than mm -hmm. other areas, is mm -hmm. that right? Yes, sir. 
And so you wanted to, to test that to see whose blood that was. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's why I collected it. And so you don't actually test it. You send it to the lab. Correct. But you actually collect that um, and you note the location of that uh, so you can send it to the lab. Is that right? Correct. And you identified the blood specimens as BSB and BSA. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and it was from those portions that you identified on your ruler where you had collected the blood and you had said that, correct? Uh, I don't recall if I measured it with a ruler. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you some uh, photographs, ask you to identify them. Thank you. These are defense exhibit for identification A. There's 76 photos. It's a composite. Can you look through the, those and just uh, let me know whether you had taken those photographs? Yes, sir, and these are the photographs I took. Uh, I'd move them into evidence. Yeah, absolutely. Rich, can you come in for a second? The photographs, which are a composite exhibit of 76 photographs, are being admitted without objection as defense exhibit number one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be about another 15 minutes with this witness. Do you guys want to take a quick break or you want to finish with the witness? Anybody need to take a quick break? All right, why don't you guys take a quick break? All right, thanks. Not bad. Five minute recess.